right, welcome everyone to today's webinar. Um, we all will go ahead and get started as people are still rolling in here a little bit. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, if you're amenable to it, please go ahead and, uh, and turn your video on and, uh, and feel free to, to pop in with the Q&A whenever you uh, feel, the, uh, feel the need to, uh, to jump into the conversation. Uh, we wanna make it as interactive as possible. Um, there's also a chat box down below if you'd like to just post a question or a comment there. Um, I'll be monitoring it throughout. And, uh, and we will plan to go from now until uh, about one o'clock, no later than one. Um, so uh, thanks again for joining everyone. Uh, today's speaker is Mike D'Arezzo. Uh, he is a recognized industry cybersecurity expert and leader in digital. Uh, he serves as the National Director of Security Services and is responsible for E Plus's security advisory services. Uh, Michael assists clients in developing transparent and secure programs for information technology and governance, risk, and compliance initiatives. Prior to E+, Michael has uh, held a strong track record of operational excellence, innovative problem solving, and regulatory compliance expertise. In addition, Michael brings over 20 years of experience working with companies like GE, AMF, and Micros Oracle on driving standards, consistency, performance, compliance, and regu regulatory affairs. So Mike, thanks so much for joining us. I will pass the stage over to you and uh, let you go to work here. Great, thanks Nick, I appreciate the intro. So my name is Mike Doretzo. I'm gonna talk about uh, Identity uh, Access Management, IDAM or IDN, uh, for those, uh, and the new normal. So I'm just gonna jump ahead uh, to the next slide here. So I'm gonna cover today, you know, who I am real quick, briefly, and then how and why did we get here. Uh, evolution of identity and, and what really kind of brought us down to this path of identity access management. Um, and then what do I need to know now as we, as we move in? So uh, as Nick had mentioned, 20 years, 20 plus years in, in IT and security. Uh, Slate Consulting uh, recently was purchased by E Plus Technology uh, January 2019, uh, where I've become the National Director of Security Advisory Services, Security Services. Uh, prior to that, it was a GE and then AMF, uh, which is now Bullmore, and then Microsystems Inc., which is now Oracle. Uh, everybody changes names, and they're all gobbling each other up. And uh, bachelor's degree uh, in IT in University of Richmond, so go Spiders, and obviously a, a, a representation from uh, ISC Squared and ISACA. So, um, so phases of COVID-19, I, I like to say that I've, I've split these up into three kind of phases. The first one was we got to do something. We've got to get out. Uh, head to the hills, right? So we're all moving to a remote workforce overnight. I've had clients say they've done it in 24 hours. I've had clients say it's taken a couple of weeks. You know, there was a shift in concern. It differs from state to state uh, where the reaction time was slowed or sped up. Um, so phase one was get everybody out. You know, we'll, we'll worry about it uh, once we're in place. Um, and then once the dust settles, you know, phase two, how do we keep the boat afloat, right? So okay, what's working, what's not working, let's put those issues together. Um, and then, you know, obviously we'll deal with the critical ones first and, and what are we doing for this? What are we doing for that? Uh, and then finally phase three, which is kind of where we are today, although hopefully we're shifting in that direction, but we may be staying a little home a little bit longer, but returning to the new normal, as I say it, um, and improving the planet. So, uh, you know, from here, I've had a couple of, Clients give me feedback. I, you know, I regularly talk to clients. You know, I've had the, the, the first one I've heard from several clients. I had, you know, did three years of digital transformation into a six week or six day implementation cycle. Um, you know, things that I wanted to put in place, they had to be in place yesterday in order to get VDI up and running, in order to get a, a VPN connection enough to support 2,000 employees remotely working between the hours of 10 and 2. Um, you know, I had to migrate as much to the cloud as I could, but, you know, I'm worried about the cost. So how do I push things to the edge? How do I, you know, get them to the edge of the network and simplify it so they're not all coming into the VPN? So, you know, this is kind of like the world is before. Everything was here. Software was a single industry. CIOs are really just kind of technology operators, moving things around where they needed to, um, putting focus on the priorities and everything else. You know, everything was kind of boxed together, right? Now, as we kind of see it, it's not like that anymore today. We had to, you know, run to the cloud, run to SaaS applications, migrate things to the edge of the network. Um, 
you know, it's everywhere. It's every platform. It's on your cell phone. And even for the before COVID-19, you know, a lot of us were already on our cell phones, hitting apps, approving workflows from your uh, cell phone, your, whether your personal or work cell phone, maybe a tablet, um, maybe I'll oh, just fire up my personal laptop real quick, hit the, hit the internet and use a SaaS application of MindGrid. And now CIOs are basically enablers, um, which is where I, I think we should be. Uh, I think we should say, hey, where do you want to be? What, are you, what do you want to do, business units? How can I get you there better? And then behind the scenes, what I always say, you know, security is meant to be transparent, right? So if I use your direction and purpose of what you want to do, one, I keep you from going out to shadow IT, but two, I also can enable you the way you want to do it, but still do it in a secure method. So, you know, we, what, we, what we kind of say is, you know, this started from a role-based access control and active directory, right? So everybody had to have some way of authenticating, hey, I'm Mike Doretzo, I am an employee of E+, let me go ahead and log in, username and password, you know, then came the web-based application. So whether that was an internal web-based application, if it was, great. Then it just used the internal uh, Active Directory and maybe it used uh, SAML or something to log, log in using Active Directory authentication. But then, like I said, we started pushing things to the edge. So five, eight, 10 years ago, we started doing this, right? Because maybe we didn't want to invest in a heavy VPN or maybe VPN was just for the IT people who worked overnight and wanted to get into the shop to do something. And we put that VPN on, on one network connection and maybe not the whole network. Um, and then came really the adoption of the cloud and multi-network, multi-tenant environments, right? So you've got your SQL users and DBAs over here. You've got your business units, maybe your external sales force, your on-the-road sales force, um, internal office applications, manufacturing workers, nursing, medical, all just kind of disparate groups over here, um, but all still needing to access the same application, like an ERM or an ERP environment. Um, so, you know, the old approach was we've got everything on the internal network. Here's trusted. Here there be, <laughs> here there be trusted people. There be dragons over here, right? So everybody else is untrusted. Well, that, that just doesn't work, right? Me working from home here in Midlothian, uh, having to connect up to uh, Northern Virginia, or maybe to a client out in California or things like that, I'm not going to be able to go to California anytime soon. So, you know, what do we have to do is basically we have to look at the way the environment is, right? So we had to dissolve the traditional perimeter, as I discussed before, and whether we wanted to or not, um, you know, where it's infrastructure resources and APIs, where does the data go, right? So, now, instead of focusing on the people and the applications, it's more of the flow of the data, right? So, you know, how do I understand how this works? Um, how, do, how does that kind of pull together? What's the cross between all the uh, applications and devices? Because it's not just user to application or user to infrastructure, but these things cross talk as well. Maybe I'm using uh, a VMware uh, to talk to something else, right? Uh, so, you know, we'll kind of look at this in a different way and really kind of say, how do I authenticate, right? So I have all these different disparate authentication uh, requirements, LDAP, SAML, RADIUS, um, WS Federation still in use, right? And then you got the OAuth and OpenID Connect that are there, RDP, gosh, help us if, if uh, RDP goes away, um, SSH, maybe a telnet here and there, Ho hopefully not, hopefully that's going away. Um, but how does that all pull together, right? So we talk about um, null authentication, off zones, and an audit, um, and pulling that together, and really kind of separating that out into the environment of what we need to, to effectively take care of, right? Um, so what's the context of the network? So if you're a small organization, maybe you just have one environment, right? As we talk about east-west traffic or the environment that the users connect to maybe your your served, your served applications like your ERP, um, you know, your support desk ticket system and things like that. But in larger environments, you want to segment that, right? You want to provide control and, and keep gateways in between to, to keep information, you know, separate and segmented and protected. There's device context, right? So maybe I don't want my personal MacBook Pro going into the server room. I, I want to have some kind of a, a application to, to say, hmm, 
I don't know that device or that device isn't trusted enough to get into the, this area. Um, how do I, how do I suppress that? And then finally context, right? Um, I always like to say, if I can't stop somebody getting in or I can't stop this from happening, I need breadcrumbs. I need some way of identifying how they got in and, and really just kind of close that down and, and, and mark that. And if I don't have that, if I don't have logs of how they got in, what time they got in, what IP address they came from, what they went after. Um, we certainly need some of this for regulatory compliance. So if somebody, unfortunately, if somebody does breach you, you have an understanding of what they access, what they potentially took and pull that together forensically. All three of these things really kind of pull all that together. Um, and it's important to know. So just real quick, remote authentication, dial in user service. This is the old fashioned way of making sure that systems stayed connected um, from a radius system. Uh, retail used this, retail and hospitality used this a lot back in the day. Um, SAML, you know, markup language within web applications that leverages uh, lookups within an active directory environment or other environments. Um, federation and, and security frameworks or token generations for applications. These are very older ways of doing it, but they still, they still work. And then OAuth and OAuth2, um, delegate access to applications um, without passing full credentials. So it's kind of like saying, here, take my hall pass. I'm not giving you my code to get in the door, but you know, you'll at least be able to walk the halls kind of thing. So, you know, building blocks, right? So authentication, uh, authorization, audit. These are kind of things we talked about before, you know, you have the user management, who are my approved users, who are my devices that are approved, how am I, you know, and this is really just asset management, right? So if we talk about the critical things out there, asset management, um, those are the key uh, things that you focus on, right? Um, who should be on here? Who, who should be have access to it? And, you know, and then access gateway. So how are they getting in, right? How are they getting in? What doorways are available? Um, what are the authorized doorways that are available? And then uh, what are the, who's authorizing them to, as they come in? Who's checking the name badges as the users are logging into the application, right? Making sure you are who you are and that you have the privilege to be there. And then finally, how do I create logging and SIM uh, monitoring, log correlation tools to monitor? And obviously in the event of something that comes up that's wrong, an alert functionality. Um, and then there's kind of that next layer is that behavioral analytics, right? So, hey, if Mike Dorenzo logs in from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, Saturday through Sunday, um, you know, what happens if he starts logging in at 3 a.m. in the morning, right? Okay, well, that's odd. Let's go ahead and make sure that that's not something out of the normal. Let's go ahead and query that and make sure he is who he says he is. Um, and maybe we don't make them in, uh, but also assessing that threat using machine learning, using artificial intelligence as it learns who I am, building a baseline and to creating a profile of who Mike Diretto is and, and having that go through. So, you know, basically everybody on this call deals with IT knows if you create friction, <laughs> no one's going to do it, right? So, and this is how shadow IT falls comes into place is how non-compliance is created and things like that. So, you know, if you build a wall, you have to put a door in the wall so that people can get through to what they need to get through that are authorized to get through, right? So having the right people, right? Hey, Mike Duretzo is authorized to be here. Um, having the right level of access, he's a DBA, he's a, a SQL user, and maybe he's a sysadmin, or maybe he's just a regular user, or maybe he's a guest user. Um, with the right resources, so he's using the right application, he's using the right browser, he's using the right device. Um, you know, maybe you have a, a identity access management built into that in the right context. So again, he's coming in from remotely, but he's, he also connected in the building just seconds ago. Well, how is that possible? Um, and then finally, you know, that it's assessed continuously, right? So it's not just trust is assumed now and forever the moment I log in and and we go from there, right? So uh, Okta um, is one of the products that I, I usually point users to. Um, it has a great spread of different things and, and solutions for uh, opportunities that you may encounter and everything else. Uh, single sign-on, obviously this is a big buzz. Uh, it's been big buzz for years. Um, 
and it's something that's difficult to migrate to if you're not uh, prepared for it. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, adaptive multi-factor authentication. So having the right context to understanding, well, he logged into this application from this IP address from here, just this username and this, and he created authentication and everything else. What does that give me later on, right? Do I need to keep querying? How many of us have had that? I hate this multi-factor authentication. I hate having to pull the token out and do this and that and the other thing. We've all seen that. We've all heard it. So, you know, how does that work and how do we reduce the stress and friction on the employees out there? Um, API access management. So how do we not have Bob, who was the sysadmin, have his domain admin password put into a, a process out there and and that gets spun out and, you know, he leaves the company years later, but we can't change his password because it's hard coded in there. Let's not do that anymore, right? Let's create API access management that allows the APIs to have right and proper access, not to mean admin credentials, but the right and proper API access to that. Um, universal directory. So this is one of those things that I like. Um, I, my team also deals with merger and acquisitions. So as you have two companies come together, how do I create a universal directory? How do I add those two together? Okta does a great job of that. It's one of the things that I, I convince clients to maybe look into this because it, it'll, it'll reduce the friction. It'll have the people come on. It'll authenticate them better. Um, and it'll keep that. It makes it easier kind of transitioning them into one uh, domain. Um, life cycle management, obviously taking from onboarding all the way through the changing of privileges. Right? I, I can't tell you how many clients or companies I've worked for in the past where um, I started in one role and I moved to another. Um, I was a DBA at one point. I was a SQL, uh, you know, management. Ad, so I, I managed the actual databases and then I went through and I, I managed the servers that served the databases. So I had to be a sysadmin and a domain admin. Well, suddenly I have absolutely everything. Not only do I have keys to the kingdom for the devices, but I also have keys to the kingdom for the data. So even if you encrypted the data as a sysadmin, I might not have access to the file to unlock it. And, and vice versa. I have access to the encryption, but I don't have access to the file. Well, I had both of them because of privilege creep. So we want to eliminate that and remove that uh, as best we can, again, without creating friction, making sure that there's crossover, but what makes sense. Um, advanced access server, uh, or advanced server access, excuse me. Um, you know, how do I manage and maintain the role-based access control? Lack of a better term, for independent users. So if you have a third party that's managing servers, uh, it, it allows you to access that and then finally access gateway. So managing the packets and, and information that's coming through. So, you know, we'll kind of split this up into, into two sides. Um, and we, you know, certainly seen things from an Okta perspective of where that helps out and how we can help improve things. So I kind of like to split this up into your workforce, right? So the people in there, you know, moving into the cloud, reducing the IT friction, not maintaining 50 logins, you know, trying not to store all my passwords, my cell phone to make that happen. Protection against data breaches, you know, making sure the passwords change, having privilege access management put in place and, and passwords salted uh, uh, properly, you know, putting in the zero trust model. Um, how does that work? How do I make sure that you are who you are, your device is who your device is, and then improving the merger and acquisition agility. So, you know, burnout for IT people, the moment you're, you know, you're already skeleton crew as it is, and then we buy a company, right? So now everybody's deployed for the next three weeks. Somebody's trying to figure this out. And how do we pull that and reduce that down, right? So, you know, accelerating cloud, putting SSO in place, adopting Office 365 in a manageable method, and still giving access to applications where you need to, and pulling that together. Um, from a customer initiative side, how do I make that easier? To have the customers easier to work with me and my company. Um, so building an application, building an API that pulls into that application, integrating those apps together to where the, prop, the, the proper access is to the data that needs to be there that maybe I'm managing on their behalf. So modernizing the infrastructure, making sure that we have the right communications, that there's no SMB version one, version two in place and putting in together a platform. Um, and that platform can be, you know, virtualized, um, whether it's in the cloud or actually containers using Kubernetes, and then protects against account takeovers, especially in a multi-tenant environment where you want to make sure that if I don't put in a string and I'd say, well, that string, if that's HTTP dot da, 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 slash 4162, what happens if I put in APP da, 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 slash 4164? Oh, I get somebody else's account. Let's go ahead and see what that gives me. 
Uh, how do I know that my stuff is safe if I can access someone else's data? So we, you know, there's a lot of that we can do here with Okta and leverage that. Okay, so sound, all this sounds great, right? So where do I begin? Um, know thyself, right? Great, great line. It's the first rule of security in my mind. Um, it's asset management. It's, it's pulling all that together. You know, do I know what applications and devices and people need to be connected, right? Do I have a good map of what that looks like? And I, I'm not saying I need to know down to the nth degree, Mike DiRetto sitting in Midlothian at his house needs to be connected to these 14 applications. Do I understand the grouping, right? Do I have an understanding of what the capability is available for that on a single platform, right? How many of us with the COVID-19 where we had enough licenses, maybe 100, 200 licenses for VPN, because that's all the concurrent user pooled licenses we needed. And then suddenly 2,000 users needed it. Um, so how do I know that? And do I know the migratory path of the applications, right? So a lot of people are migrating to Office 365. A lot of us are in flux between Office on-prem exchange servers and migrating. That's, you know, we, you know, E plus it just finished its migration from the slate to the to the E plus Office 365. So there's there's always that. Um, and you know, always want to throw out a shout out to Major Mark Lippin who kind of really nailed, uh, nailed that home uh, of the node I saw. So that sounds great. You know, preparation. So I would say upgrade all the components as necessary. Um, gateways, APIs, applications. Making sure that you know you you have a methodology in place. So understand, you know, you have a methodology. So I want to use SAML and I'm going to go with SAML to do authentication. Well, let's build into this. I can't do it all. I have to use OAuth 2 for some applications. Um, or maybe I have to use SSH and, and um, um, IFS, uh, excuse me, IIS environments to pull all that together. So, you know, make sure you pilot on two non-critical applications right first. So this is going to work for me do people like this? This is something that I can go with, right? Now, don't want to sweat this out and make sure that you, you have all this in place. And, you know, we, we certainly don't want the ERP system to be the one critical application. We have the SAML, you know, running on, <clears throat> and then suddenly Friday morning, the end of the quarter, no one can, can get to it. And, you know, don't want to have, please don't make that happen. And then review of the pilot prior to rollout. So understanding and taking a week to understand all the data inputs that you got from that, these two applications ran well, this is that. Maybe we take one legacy, the older application and one new application, one cloud SaaS application that's already out there. And how does that work? What's the difference between those two? Do I need a third pilot to make sure that this is right? Um, do I want to do this in stages, right? So just to kind of recap, you know, zero trust exchange, this is where we're kind of building that model, we're pulling on all together. Um, making sure that we know the models that we want for the zero trust to occur, right? So am I going down to the device level? Is it just the user? Is it just the uh, environment that I want to go to? Um, know thyself, right? Really just kind of understand from an asset side, do I have a good understanding of the applications? Do I have a good understanding of the assets, both the users, the devices, and the data, right? So where is the data? What, what kind of data types do I have and everything else? Can't hammer this home enough, right? Know thyself, really kind of understand what that looks like. Um, map it out. You know, if you don't have a data classification policy where it kind of says, here's my public, here's my internal data, here's my confidential. In some cases, here's my restricted information. Um, if you're dealing with government, uh, DOD stuff, or, or even HIPAA, maybe I'd put HIPAA in, in restricted information. Um, I'd put SPII, you know, a race, creed, gender um, into uh, confidential and maybe the stuff that really carries heavy fines if it's lost or damaged in the restricted, if, if that's where you are. Really kind of pull that together and understand what that is. Um, upgrade any components you have in place. What you don't want to do is start upgrading these components as you're putting in identity access management. You really want to understand the migration path and the roadmap of where those things are and, and how they're gonna get there. Um, and really kind of pull together, okay, this is a migration path. This year, we're gonna do this, 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 and this in Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Next year, it's gonna be this, this, and this. We're gonna move to Office 365. We're gonna push Office 365 out till next year. How does all that work? Knowing and understanding that, you know, <laughs> the, first, the first casualty of war is usually the plan. 
but you usually understand that, that things might change and everything else and that there's a migration path, but it's not locked and stuff. Okay. Um, and then pilot and user acceptance testing. Please do this. Um, I know it's difficult and I know you're going to be tempted to kind of just say, we got to get everybody out, <laughs> everybody out, you know, and, and just go and run for the hills. Um, but don't do that. Really kind of pull together uh, a pilot group, um, a user acceptance testing group, somebody who's got the time and dedication to go through a, uh, use cases and test them out and make sure that everything works. So, you know, privileged user or regular user, if you can get a client to help out, that's even better. But, you know, obviously those are rare and in between. Um, but just make sure that you test these out. Um, so that's it. Really just kind of wanted to cover that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or the team at Okta. Um, you know, Matt Valentine, uh, I, I should have grabbed your here, but uh, you know, mvalentine at octa.com. Um, let, let us know if you need help. If you just want to talk, this is non-committal. So if you're just kind of understanding you want to have, you have some questions about where you are and what you'd like to do and if you're kicking it around, you can always send me an email. I'll always take an email. I'll always take a phone call um, to kind of answer any questions and help out. Um, that's what we're here for. My team is really just kind of here to answer questions and help pe help people move into the direction that they want to move into. If there's a gotcha, you know, ahead of time, um, I like to say it's always easier to learn from other people's mistakes rather than your own if you have the capability and to do that. So, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's not that, you know, I'm, I'm a good uh, person to bounce it off of having talked to so many clients and, and working with so many clients. But that's all I have.